Hello and welcome back again to The Cock Dice, the channel where we've been playing with ourselves for the last seven weeks. Tonight we're back again for another Perilous Tales game. This time it's Shadows Over the Jungle as Butch Sullivan and co take on the Voodoo Cult. Our table set up for the game tonight. So we are playing against the Voodoo Cult in the Jungle. Uh, the three objectives for tonight are Escape, Kill the Villain and Destroy the Idol. The Idol has been set up in the middle of the board here. Uh, we've gone for the encircling deployment. So we've got one, two, three, four, five markers around the center, then one in each of the corners down there, uh, as well as the voodoo cult and the objectives. The three events hidden under these markers tonight are putrid stench, um, slimy underfoot, uh, which is unsteady underfoot, and there's something out there which is panic attack. Uh, we're playing, the other thing to say is we're playing the uh, second edition beta rules, beta rules mark two, um, just download a fresh copy to make sure I've got the latest version. Um, so if there's any differences between this and other videos or uh, later videos, that will be why. And here's our eponymous heroes for the night. It is Butch and his gang. First of all, we've got Butch in the centre. He comes with tough guy once again. We've got Marcus down the side here, who is a medic. We have Umbatu returning again, as I really missed him in the last guy, game. He's got Brute. Uh, we've got Frankie uh, with Demo Expert yet again. And a new addition to the crew this week, we have Dastan when he comes with Sneaky. So that should be quite useful for slipping through the jungle unnoticed. And they're facing off tonight against the Voodoo Cult. We have the Voodoo Priestess here at the back. We have the Witch Doctor over here. Uh, I don't have a voodoo doll, but uh, he's going to have a fire imp. And uh, instead of zombies, we've got a bunch of, uh, let's call them zombified um, jungle tribesmen. So that's tonight's uh, teams for you. Rightio, we are off with turn one. So our heroes are starting at the back line over here. And our mission is to get into the board this way and off on this side of the board. We're going to start off with Dastan down here. Now he comes with the sneaky rule. Uh, when this model would reveal a threat marker, if they make a skill check, make a skill check, if successful, they do not reveal a threat marker. Um, so I'm going to leave him for a minute, actually. Slightly further out, so it's nice, slightly better out. Uh, I think I'm going to use Umbatu first. He's just going to move up four to there. Frankie's going to move, I want to stay six inches away if his first turn. So Frankie's going to move up to here. Marcus will do the same. Move up to here, staying outside of six. Because I don't want anyone triggering them on their own. So you can actually come all the way down to there fairly safely. Butch is going to come into the middle here. Uh, staying six away. Like, yeah, so he's all right there. Okay, I'm going to do dust and he's going to move four to here and he's going to try and move another four up to here. Oh, actually, Umbatu will do, because um, he only moved once, he'll do the cover you. Until the end of this round, first time a villainous model ambushes within line of sight and range of this model, this model may make an immediate attack action, even if engaged. So, just in case that's uh, something ripply, uh, we're going to make sure we stay outside of six of this one as well. So we reveal this threat marker here. Oh, I'm going to make a note, I'm not, nah, I'm not making that mistake again. See last game for what I mean. So I'm going to do a skill check. He's sneaky. It's a straight skill check. There's no modifiers for it. So it's two dice for Dastan plus uh, against the difficulty dice. So the difficulty is two. Uh, there's no minimum difficulty according to this. So he makes that and he can move around close to that marker, which is really useful. Um, Cause next time when I start springing the trap, it can be quite good. And I presume actually, if any others move towards him as well, when anytime he's the revealer, he can just kind of duck and dive through. So I'm gonna get him to, move around a bit and get past these markers. That's the end of the hero's turn. So we're gonna do a threat check. It's the first round threat check. So that starts on one now, doesn't it? So it's an advantage roll. Um, the advantage takes away the higher dice. So we have a difficulty of three, we a single nine, that is one success, which means it's the noose tightened. So move each unrevealed threat marker one inch towards the heroic model nearest to it. If there's one in 10, so in 10 of all of the, of the heroes, all of these are 
these back three. So these back three will just move in an inch towards the centre of the board. Don't know, I need to measure that because it's the size of the width of the marker. Um, this one's going to move within an inch of, of Dastan. Now Dastan can take a skill check to try and avoid triggering it. He uh, gets difficulty eight, but he rolls a nine. However, Umbatu doesn't. Uh, oh, it's the closest model would trigger it. And it's, um, query that. For now, I'm going to count it off Dastan because uh, uh, this one's going to move forward an inch as well. And then Dastan will see if he reveals that. Uh, he gets difficulty of five and he scores a nine. This one's going to move over probably towards Butch because it can't really move through the thing. So that will trigger. Let's see if uh, Butch can't avoid it. So that's going to flip. That's a six. Uh, six is Putrid Stench. It remains in play. All models within six inches suffer disadvantage on all attack actions. Oh, that's a really bad place for that to go. That's going to wipe out a huge chunk of my board over here. Okay, so all these others, he's going to have to move around an inch here. He'll move an inch forward. That'll move an inch forward here. That's already moved. Okay. So there we go. That is the enemy's... Um, Activation, uh, villainous turn, threat level is now one, and we then apply the threatening overture, so the threat level becomes two. Back to the hero's phase. Well, Butch is the tough guy, so I think Butch is going to... Oh, I'll stay away six inches away from that. Oh, that'll, that'll end my go. So we're going to move Frankie down to here. Staying, I'm going to pop her on that bottom step, but she's essentially staying outside of six. Marcus will do the same, staying out of six of any of the markers. Like that. A bit risky putting them in the disadvantaged area, but it will see. Um, Dastan's going to try and sneak. Uh, I might sneak him towards the idol so he can just beat the idol up. Uh, four inches, doesn't get him quite there. Let's sneak this way. Uh, no, let's sneak. It's going to sneak right in the middle of them. That's really stupid. Um, are you going to sneak to there? In this wood over here. So he's going to take a check to see if he triggers this. Uh, he does, unfortunately. It's a one. <laughs> Voodoo Priestess. So we pop her on there. Probably quite good for me coming out this early in the game. So she is the villain. So we move the threat level up by one to threat level three. Okay, when revealed, place a voodoo doll in base contact with the hero or a random teammate if the hero is dead, as close to the villain as a board edge as possible. No, that's not too bad either. We'll just murder the that thing. So it comes on over there. And revealed from a threat marker, spawn this model so it's centered on the threat marker. Yeah, so she stays there. I thought I'd read that. So yeah, that's um, that's her spawned there. So that ends the turn. So it's over to the villainous turn now. That's a bad start, um, actually. So we're now on to a threat check again. We've got. I should have triggered some um, uh, keep an eye out type things. So we'll roll first of all. So for the threat check, we have a difficulty of two. Uh, with successes, two successes there, which is still the Noose Titans. So this is, we're going to move an inch towards Dastan, and he'll see if he can avoid that. Difficulty seven, no he doesn't, so that flips. That's an eight. That is, there's something out there. When revealed, the revealer, and every model within six inches of the threat marker. So it is only, it is only Dastan. Must take a horror check with a disadvantage. Treating this marker as the closest enemy model. Discard the threat marker after. Uh, so he gets a difficulty seven and eight and rolls a five. So he's going to hoof it back over this way. Luckily not off the board. Discard that after playing the doing it so yeah that's obviously the appearance of the voodoo priestess scared the daylights out of poor uh, dastan uh, and he hoofed it <laughs> quite far away okay uh, and then we do the threatening overtures which is add one to the threat level takes it to threat level four 
bearing in mind now I only have up to 10 threats to finish the game. We'll do the Voodoo Doll. It is aggressive minion, so it's going to attack Butch because it's spawned in contact with him. It's skill one, one difficulty dice. Um, just going to check. It's only heroic models that cause that. So it gets a difficulty of two and it rolls a one. Oh dear, Tiny Terror is useless um, after being attacked. It's not been attacked yet. So that's fine. So that's it done. The Voodoo Priestess. She is Villain Lurker. Curse counts for being in contact with any model that's in base contact with the doll. So she can curse Butch. She's skill level five. Two, three, four, five. So she gets difficulty of nine. She scores one success there. Butch obviously has tough guy and ignores the one success. So he's fine. And then we do the act after activating a lurker. If this model is the first lurker this round to end its activation in contact with the unrevealed. No, after attacking, move six inches towards the nearest unrevealed threat marker, which will be this one over here. But it doesn't end in base contact with it. So she disappears off over there. That's inconvenient. Okay, that is the uh, villainous turn. We're on to the third hero's turn. Not that turns particularly matter now. Before we trigger anything, it's just outside six. That's just outside six. Can't shoot him. Can start getting some shots on the, the Voodoo Priestess there. And we're gonna have to start pummeling her. I need to get the marker down as well. I think first of all Butch is going to attempt to attack the um, imp. He is unfortunately oh, he's within six inches of this as well. I'm going to pull back actually. So he's going to attempt to escape first of all because then I can get away uh, with not having my disadvantage. So he's going to do a escape from combat skill test, minimal difficulty equal to the highest skill value of the models engaging it. So that's one. So uh, I've got a seven and a nine. So I'm at disadvantage, so it's a nine. I failed that as a roll. So I'll have to try it again. Oh, difficulty nine again. Right, fails twice. Um, third time, he's just going to smack the imp then. So he's on a roll at disadvantage. If any hits miss, so I've got a, a minimum difficulty of six and otherwise scored a critical hit. I also failed on three dice and the Voodoo Doll has Tiny Terror when attacking this model. If the attacker's skill dice, any of the attacker's skill dice fail to roll a success, cancel all successes. So I've got to roll all successes to hit him. If I do that, he's dead, but it's a bit of a pain. I really want to free up Butch as quickly as I can as well, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so I think Dastan's going to go next. He's going to move four inches around here. Can you see the Voodoo Priestess from there? Not really. I'm going to have to move four inches back around here as well. I want to stay six away from any of the markers. I'm just say seven away so he doesn't trigger any of them. And Batu is going to move four inches up here. And he's going to fling his knives at the Voodoo Priestess. Now she's skill level five, but I rolled an eight for difficulty and only a pair of sevens for successes. So Mbatu misses. Uh, Marcus is going to move to outside of six inches of that marker. And he's going to take a straight shot down the line of the wall without any... Uh, now, oh, I've got to take a skill check. Hang on. Beautiful and uh, terrible. Heroic models must pass a skill check. Shall I pass a skill check first of all? Uh, difficulty one. Pass on to nine and three. So he passes his skill check. He's now going to shoot her. We get difficulty five on the dice. She's also skill five. So that sets it at five. We've got a four and a nine. So he does a single success on her. One wound of seven. Okay. Frankie is going to... Oh, do I just run over there and demo the... Uh, I might just demo... I'm going to do that. So Frankie's going to move over to the Barker, four inches. She's going to roll in at disadvantage, but this will be hilarious, trust me. Uh, dynamite attack. If we're not within two inches of it. Oh, 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 oh. 
that's perfect that is perfect yeah we'll do this skill test place dynamite marker in base contact then walk four every model within two inches of the dynamite marker suffers a skill six attack that ignores line of sight then remove it so we get difficulty two and a five i get a because I'm rolling at disadvantage, so we throw the two away, which means it's difficulty five. I scored an eight, so she successfully places a dynamite marker within an inch, which she's going to put over here, so that the voodoo priestess is in two inches of it. Should she get any further around there? I could actually push push Frankie right round to there. Place a marker there. Yeah, she's three inches away, so I'm going to place the dynamite. I haven't got dynamite token, sorry. Uh, place the marker there. Uh, but it will catch the priestess and that and then i can make a walk action four inches away which i'm going to disappear over here do a skill six attack two four five six now i presume this isn't disadvantaged because she's not a model so it's a single dice so we'll roll against the idol of course, I rolled an eight for difficulty on that, um, but I scored two hits on the on the idol and against the voodoo priestess. We get a difficulty seven, and we score a seven and a ten, which means she takes three more damage. So she's up to four damage now. Okay, that wasn't awful. That was a bit of a boom. <laughs> I like Frankie. <laughs> Demo Expert's fun. Yeah, it's got no limit on it now, so we can use it multiple times. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> right, okay, so Frankie's been, 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 been. I think that's everyone gone. So we're up to the villainous turn again. We're going to roll a threat check. It is now threat level four. Let's go. Uh, we throw the six away, so it's difficulty two. We get two, two, four and a seven. That's four successes. That is crawling chaos. Oh, my least favorite result ever. So Butch, first of all, he gets a six difficulty, but just about manages to scrape him with a six as his success. Uh, we'll do Marcus. He gets difficulty eight and scores an eight. Always oh, these are tight. Frankie, uh, she fails and does one four inches. That's not going to help me for my dynamite attack next turn. Umbatu. Ah, he's not running away today. That's good, 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 good. Uh, and finally, uh, Sneaky Thief. He gets difficulty eight and scores two fails and runs back off again uh, towards the nearest board edge. Four. Oh, I've got escape. has got a threat level of eight again. Uh, and then we play, play the Noose Titans. So, Tinches. No, he's out. Oh, he's just in tens. It moves towards him. Uh, Seven, seven, this one moves towards Marcus, and that will trigger. That's a two, that is the Witch Doctor. Pop him there for the minute. So the Witch Doctor, Dance of Death, at the end of the actor's activation, all zombies within six inches immediately activate for free. This can lead to zombies activating twice in a single turn. Whoo, ow. Uh, luckily no zombies yet, but he's going to actually appear here. And this one's going to move in six inches towards him as well. But it's just about outside of six. This will move into the centre, this one will move into the centre. Okay, I didn't realise I'm playing against the threat level eight again tonight. This is going to have to be get moving to get some... I've got no points currently. I've got to kill the villain, escape or destroy the idol. Okay, so villain's turn. So we've got to attack. We'll do the um, voodoo doll first of all. He's skill one, rolling against Butch. Uh, he scores a difficulty of five, but only gets a two is a success. So fails that um, attack. Oh, I should have pushed him away, shouldn't I? Okay, well, we'll do that next time. I forgot to move. His last turn, he should have moved six inches back, which would have actually freed up um, other people to shoot him instead of the priestess. Oh, hey ho. Missed a mistake there, and it would have probably put him within the blast radius as well. <laughs> oh well. We'll do the Voodoo Priestess. So she doesn't, she can again, she's got line of sight towards Butch, so she can attack Butch. Five dice attack, she gets a difficulty of three and scores four successes. He ignores one of them, 
and takes three damage. And we've got the Witch Doctor now. So he is a skill seven, two, four, five, six, seven, going up against Frankie, no, against Marcus. He's actually pretty tough. Minion aggressive, four, oh no, it's a minion lurker, nine wounds, skill seven. So he gets a difficulty of seven, but rolls, oh my gosh. An eight, a nine, a seven, a nine, a nine, and a 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage on Marcus. That's Marcus left with one wound left and he's the medic. <laughs> oh dear. Um, here's a lurker. So after activating, if it's line of sight, uh, uh, if they're able to attack its victim without moving, it attacks its current victim. After attacking, it moves six inches towards the nearest unrevealed threat marker. So it moves back towards that threat marker there. Okay, so that's all the villains done. We're back to our hero's turn. Oh no, hang on. Ooh, tch, tch, tch. Up to no good. After activating a lurker, if this model is the first lurker this round to end its activation in contact with a unrevealed threat marker, increase the threat by one, five. And then it should have increased by one for threatening overtures as well, which I forgot to do. So we're now at threat by level six and it gets to eight and again, the game's over. And I've got to get off that side of the board. That's ridiculous. Dustin can't quite make it this turn. And it depends whether or not the threat level goes up twice this turn or whether I can reduce it by killing the queen. Oh, she also should move towards six inches towards the nearest threat marker. Okay, we're gonna have to kill the queen. Then we're gonna have to do something else. <laughs> I don't know what. Okay, so I think the first first game here is stay six inches away from this, but he's going to do a fairly safe eight inch move over to here. Do a four inch move. Mm. Something gets me to there. That's within six. Four inches this way. Gets me a bit closer to that edge. I can. So he's going to be four, and he's going to throw. Um, I have no idea. Rocks probably. At the Volcano Queen, so skill test first to see if I can fire at, uh, can shoot at target her. That's the word I wanted. Uh, difficulty two, scores a two and an eight. So that's successful. Now a skill check to see what damage he does. And I just realised I've been forgetting the extra dice for shooting attacks, haven't I? You still get an extra attack. Plus one skill. I have. Oh, missed out on damage. So uh, difficulty ten, so can't can't succeed there. That was a bit of a fluff. Um, I think Marcus is just going to stay still and open up with his uh, machine gun there. Let's put some damage on that. So first of all, skill check for targeting her. He gets a difficulty seven and fails it. So he can't target her on the first action. What happens there? I presume if I fail, I lose my action. So he'll try his second action and try and do it again. Uh, I think I failed that. Let's play fair. <sighs> Umbatu. Can Umbatu see her? No, she's hidden behind there. I'd have to move in here. That loses me an attack. I'm going to move it this way. Four inches. And he's going to fling some knives at her. I only need to do three damage to kill her. Oh, Ignore that roll. I'll take a skill check first to target her. Difficulty eight, he fails, can't target her. Um, Frankie will move four up and shoot as well. Come on, we've got to do three damage to her. It's not difficult. Difficulty eight gets an eight and a nine. So she piles on two more damage. Foodie Priestess has one damage left, and that because that will reduce the threat level by two. So I think Butch is going to have to. Oh, I should have done Butch and ordered her forwards. And then she could have shot twice. Oh well. Um, Butch is going to duck out of combat. Now, knowing that I started at a disadvantage, <laughs> he rolls a 10, of course, with difficulty. Second action, tight again. Difficulty four. 
gets a 10 and a 6. So he's going to make a walk action. He's going to make a walk action down here to... Oh, can I not get outside of 6 of that? And still be in... Where's 6 of that? That's right over here. Flipping it. I'm not, but I'm just I'm out. So he's going to move down here. Uh, three wounds, isn't he? Uh, his final attempt, he's going to attempt to shoot at the priestess. So difficulty to see her and target her. He gets a four difficulty and succeeds on that. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot at her, so I get plus one skill dice. Uh, difficulty of seven, I score an eight, and oh, well, since the other one was cocked, and uh, we'll call it a nine. Two successes. She is gone. Um, that's it. That's her gone. That reduces the threat level by two to four. That's a good start. Um, good start to this round, indeed. Okay, that's the end of the heroes go. We've killed the villain. That's a good start. That's three victory points. Uh, I should be able to run Dastan off the board this turn. If he can pass his skill check for running between the threat markers. That'll be another point. So that's four points. If I can destroy the idol and not get killed in the process, I might be on with a winner. Let's see how we go. So threat, uh, threat, <coughs> threat check. One, two, three, four. Rolling with advantage. There we go. So take away the eight. So the difficulty for the threat check is two. And we've got four successes there. That is crawling chaos once again. So we've got a bunch of horror checks to do. So we'll start with Marcus here. Obviously, he is scared to wits out of his wits because of the wounds. He's going to do one from the nearest enemy marker, enemy model, and run into the woods there, which is probably quite good for him. Um, Frankie could do with staying. She gets a nine, but manages to get a nine success. Um, Umbatu, difficulty nine. No, he fluffs it. Uh, he can't really, he's going four inches back this way. Oh, just sick of that thing in the way. Dastan, difficulty five, scores a six. And finally, Butch. Difficulty five gets a nine, a six, and a seven, so passes with ease. Okay, then we apply the Noose Titans, so all these move in an inch. Side of six. Uh, nearest model, that would be one inch that way. This one moves towards an inch towards the centre. This one moves an inch towards Butch, and I didn't realise I hadn't triggered that last time. So that should trigger now. That's a four. That's a zombie. Woohoo! Uh, zombie jumps into Butch. Uh, zombie. Shambling. It moves three inches instead of six inches. It's aggressive. So it pops itself right out there. <sighs> okay. So... I'll do that. I'll carry on doing the little limpy thing. So he is minion aggressive. So he's going to attack the nearest heroes. He's going to follow Butch down here. He will attack Butch with his one dice attack. He has difficulty six and only scores a five. So that's him out of it. That's fine. I'll do the shambling zombie next. That's skill six. Skill no, skill five. God. <laughs> Uh, he gets a four difficulty, scores four hits on Butch. He reduces that by one, so takes three. He's halfway through his health pool. Fighting off two enemies. Witch Doctor is a lurker. Uh, so he's not able to attack. He's not within... Uh, threat level's not seven, is it? No, so... Um, So it's not over a seven, so it's not aggressive. If it's able to attack its current victim without moving, no, it can't. Else, if it's in the line of sight of a heroic model but not within range to attack it, move it towards the nearest unreal threat marker. So it's going to apply that one and it will move how many inches? Six inches. Oh no. 
because that's going to trigger that one now. Um, on the upside, that moves him away from his zombies. Moves him away from that zombie there, which means, I think, six inches. Just out of six inches. Just. So that's not going to get the Dance of Death. Phew, lucky butch there. However, he is the first lurker to end his activation in contact with a unveiled threat marker. So that increases the threat level by one to five. And if it starts this activation there, he can f it flips next turn. So I'm going to have to kill him within the next turn. <sighs> okay. So that's all the bad guys gone. That's not bad. It's not great, but um, I'm not sure what else I can do here. I just realised that's not him. That's the that's that. Dustin's going to try and make a run for it. Um, I'm back to Marcus can't see there. Frankie can kind of see past a friend. I'm not sure if he can target past friends. Line of sight. Any attack of passes space to any part of the target space without crossing blocking terrain. You have line of sight. Models can draw line of sight in any direction. Do not have a facing. It would seem to be suggest that I can see past that. Oh, I know what I've not done. I didn't do the threatening overtures at the end of last check either. So it is actually threat level six. So I'm going to have to get cracking this turn. So Mbatu is going to move four inches over to here. He's going to throw his knives at the idol. Try and take it out. Let's chuck some damage on that. He gets difficulty seven, scores a nine and a ten, so he does two more damage to it. It can take... That will end the game if I kill that, though. Okay, let's be a bit careful here. Um, Butch is going to go next. He's going to, first of all, do a... Um, is it call over? Do I have to move towards him or can I just do any action? So, range eight inches. Target heroic model may immediately make either a walk four inches or escape from combat action. I'm within eight inches, so he's going to do a walk four and he's going to walk four inches forward. There. Staying over this side. Here. Uh, he's going to take a skill check to see if he avoids triggering that. Yes, difficulty of one and scores two successes, so he's fine. He's just literally going to hoof off the board in a minute. But we'll go back to Butch. So Butch is going to attack the Witch Doctor. He's got nine wounds. I'm rolling at disadvantage still, I believe. Yep. Two, three, four dice at disadvantage. So I take the lowest one away. That leaves me with a difficulty of seven. That's fine because he's skill seven anyway. I score two successes. That's two damage on the Witch Doctor. He can take nine wounds in total. And my last action, I'm going to hit him again. I'm just going to have to ignore the imp, basically. And it's doing a disadvantage. Uh, we get difficulty eight, but we get a pair of nines and a ten. That's another four damage. That takes the Witch Doctor to six damage. That's good. Not quite killed him, but that will suffice for the minute. So we've done Umbatu, we've done Butch, we've got Marcus, Frankie, and um, uh, uh, Dastan to go. So Dastan's going to go next. I'm going to make sure I score these points. So he's going to run. Four inches skirting around there and ending there, hopefully without six. He's only in six of two of them, so he's going to have to take two checks to see if he reveals a marker. Uh, see if he reveals this one. Uh, difficulty eight, yes he does. That's a three, that's a zombie. That slows him down somewhat. And this one over here. Difficulty five, he succeeds in sneaking past that one. So his only option now is to break away from combat. Zombies are skill five, so it's minimum difficulty of five, and I've got to get one success. So we'll do that. Can I sneak away? So he gets difficulty seven, however, he is Dastan, he is extra, extra sneaky. He makes it with an eight, and he's going to hoof it off the board there. And that gives me one victory point so far for escape. He's escaped. Okay. So I'm on three victory points, four victory points so far. Hey, I'm doing better than last game. <laughs> this is going all right. Uh, Marcus, Marcus is going to uh, move four inches. Now, it doesn't seem to say that friendly models block line of sight. So he's going to stand there. He's going to point his gun over on Batu's head. And he's going to let rip at the idol. So I've got a minimum difficulty of six. Uh, it got us a seven. He scores one success there. That takes up to five damage. 
Unfortunately, Frankie can't get. I could just try not to kill Butch. Two inch blast radius. I might kill Butch doing that. I'd probably kill the imp. I'd probably kill him. It's not an attack, so I don't think the imp's tiny terror applies. I could just stand still and plant dynamite at my feet. Move four inches and blow it up. Oh, what the heck. Butch will survive six damage, I'm sure. So she's going to plant a dynamite there. It's a skill check. Difficulty seven. She scores a nine and a ten. That succeeds. She plants some dynamite. The dynamite goes down. I'm going to really mark her for a dynamite. We'll use this blue dice here. Dynamite's going to go down there. Base contact with her. So it's a two inch marker normally. She's then going to move four inches. Uh, that's his wounds. So I'll move that. She's going to move four inches. Um, God, I've really bottleneck myself here. She's going to move four inches around to here. So she's outside of two inches of it. It then explodes. Every model within two inches of it takes a skill six attack. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Witch Doctor, of course it gets difficulty 10 on him, so it doesn't do anything. On the Imp, difficulty 2, the Imp explodes into pieces. That's him dead. And Butch, got to get the 10 again, difficulty 10. No, difficulty 5, we score 1, 2 successes, reduces it by 1, so Butch takes 1 more point of damage from that. Oh, I wish the Witch Doctor had taken some damage there. That would have been really handy. That might have given me a bit of leeway. I think that's all the hero's gone. That might be it. that might be the game. We'll see. Let's see what the threat check does. So we're at threat level six, two, three, four, five, six, and two for the advantage. Uh, we take away the six. It's difficulty two. We score one, two, three, four, five. Five is from the shadows. Oh, the result nobody ever wants, especially not at this time of the game. So we place an extra minion, which I have one over here. Uh, at the hero that's got the least friendly models within three inches of it, which is Butch. <laughs> Just not going anywhere today. So he spawns there. Um, and then I do the Crawling Chaos. Oh, I swear I had two. At this end of the game, unfortunately. At the end of each round. So it's good. Finish, I finish the round and then I do the threat level is eight. Okay, so then I do running away checks. So Butch, first of all. It's difficulty nine and falls down. There we go. Umbatu. Difficulty eight, he runs off. Oh, this isn't good. Four inches back here. Uh, Marcus gets a three. He's stoic as heck, as usual. And uh, Frankie goes this way. Oh, she gets difficulty one, so she doesn't run away. Uh, news Titans, these all move in within an inch. Oh, so the threat level goes up to six, uh, so eight, seven. Uh, news Titans, there's only two, one, two markers left, so they move in. And finally, we have um, Threatening Overture, that takes it up to eight. These two are going to attack Butch, who's down. So, first of all, the Shambling Zombie with skill five, hitting him when he's down. An advantage, so we take that away. Um, oh dear, so actually, that's not bad. So, difficulty two on two, two hits, two damage. He ignores one of them, so he only takes one more damage. The other zombie, the same again. Uh, he has difficulty eight, scores once. Oh no, he throws that away, doesn't he? So he's rolling at advantage. Uh, eight and a six, he gets two successes, but takes one more point of damage again. Didn't kill Butch, so that's good. Witch Doctor, it's now past that, so he's aggressive. He moves six inches towards the nearest hero. Can't get to anyone. He starts the activation there, so that's flips, and that would be another minion. And then he's kind of moves six inches around here. And that's it. That is the game. At the end of the round, uh, we check the threat level. The threat level is eight or higher, and so... We run out of time to get off the board and literally my cameras, my dice cameras just run out of batteries. Uh, that's exceedingly good timing. So what do we think there? We scored, um, let's do a quick count up. One point for escape, 
Three points for kill the villains, that takes us to four points. I failed to destroy the idol, um, so four points. Hero is alive at the end of the game, just about. That's five victory points. Uh, didn't lose a single teammate, six victory points. There we go, six victory points. So for tonight's game, we get adequate again. <laughs> I shall give you a shilling for it. And there we have it, Butch Sullivan and co. Although they took the voodoo priestess out, they failed to destroy the idol, failed to escape the shadows of the jungle and the voodoo cult. Thank you very much for joining us once again here at Cock Dice. Please like and subscribe, click the little notification icon and you'll get all the latest updates from the channel. It's great to see you all again. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.